As an example of the eigenvalue algorithm, let's find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. And I only wrote down the matrix on the board and not the rest of the system because all of the information we need is in the matrix. And the rest of the system is the same for all eigenvalue systems. xy equals lambda xy. That's why most of the time we use the term eigenvalue and eigenvector of a matrix as opposed to eigenvalue and eigenvector of a system, although both terms are fine. And I also pick the matrix with, with numbers like these, so we don't have any notion of trying to guess the answer. And carrying out the eigenvalue algorithm is our only way. So let's go ahead and carry it out. So the first step in the algorithm is subtracting lambda from the diagonal and evaluating the determinant of the matrix and equating that determinant to zero. Okay, and this equals, making sure I have space, we're in good shape, 17 minus lambda times negative 16 minus lambda. Of course, it's this entry times this, minus this times this. And 45 times six is 90 times 270. And because it's minus 45 times minus six, we have to add 270. Okay, simplifying, we get lambda squared minus 17 lambda plus 16 lambda. So the net is minus lambda, pretty good. And the free term is 17 times minus 16. Oh boy, what have I done? 17 times 16 is 100. 272. So it's minus 272 plus 270 minus 2. Very simple characteristic equation and it must equal 0. So here is the equation that we need to solve in order to determine the eigenvalues. And of course it's a simple quadratic equation and its roots are 2 and negative 1. Lambda equals 2 and negative 1. And I now want to point out two magical things about eigenvalues. Let's look back at this matrix and determine its trace, which is the sum of the diagonal element. And the trace of this matrix is 1. 17 minus 6 is 1. So the trace of this matrix is 1. And the sum of the eigenvalues is 1. Coincidence? Absolutely not. The sum of the eigenvalues always equals the trace of the matrix. The sum of the eigenvalues, sometimes you have to double count the eigenvalues, as we discussed before, but it's a statement that's generally true. The sum of the eigenvalues equals the trace of the matrix. If you want the statement to always be true, we would have to talk about linear algebra and complex numbers. But if you find, with real numbers, a full set of eigenvalues, and that statement is always true. What about the product of the eigenvalues? That's minus 2. Well, that's the determinant of this matrix. The determinant of this matrix is our familiar minus 272 plus 270, which equals negative 2, and that's the product of the eigenvalues. So if you have a full set of eigenvalues, as many eigenvalues as the dimension of the space, their sum is the trace, and their product is the determinant and it's always true and at least in the case of two by two matrices it's very easy to prove and for more general dimensional matrices it's not hard to prove at all and the proof is largely algebraic there are many proofs one the simple one of the simpler ones is algebraic all right so we have our two eigenvalues let's find the corresponding eigenvectors and the way we do it is by subtracting to uh, the eigenvalue from the diagonal. So here's where we'll deal with one of them. Here's where we'll deal with the other. Minus one. All right, dealing with the one that equals two first. Subtracting two from the diagonal leaves us with 15 and negative 18. And the rest of the entries are unchanged. Negative six, 45. And if we found the eigenvalue correctly, this matrix should be singular with linearly dependent columns. Okay, let's see if it is. 
Well, it is, and you should be able to see it. Okay, now we just have to find the proper linear combination. And for that, you only have to look at the first two entries, because whatever proportion the first two entries are in, the other entries are in the same proportion. That's because this matrix is singular. Okay, and I think the easier way to think, to see that it's singular, is to compare the rows. And of course, this row is three times this row. The columns are in a more complicated proportion. And that proportion is two to five. So you have to take two of this column and that'll match five of this column. Two times 15 is 30 and this is minus 30. And here we have 90 and minus 90. So indeed, it's two and five. So the corresponding eigenvector V1 is 2, 5. Let's test the fact that we got this correctly. So multiplying this matrix by 2, 5, I'll do it in my mind uh, and skip the, skip the details, but it'll be 34, it'll be 4, and 90 minus 80, 10. 4, 10. This matrix times this vector is 4, 10. Exactly twice the input. So this test shows us that we are so far doing well. We identify this eigenvector correctly. For the other one, we have to subtract minus 1 from the diagonal. Subtracting minus 1 is the same as adding 1. So let's see what we get in this case. Six, we're adding. So 18 minus 6 and minus 15 and 45 is unchanged. All right, I think it's good practice, which I didn't do this time, to write down the diagonal entries first and then fill in all of the other entries that are unchanged. And these are very clearly in proportion three to one. So the corresponding eigenvector is, well, let's be careful, one, three. So one, one, three. Okay, let's test to make sure that's correct. Multiplying this matrix by 1, 3 makes, gives us negative 1 and 45 minus 48, negative 3. So negative 1, negative 3, exactly minus 1 times the input. So we have found both eigenvalues and eigenvectors correctly. So this was a good demonstration of the eigenvalue algorithm and we discovered a little bit of eigenvalue magic, the sum being the trace, the product being the determinant along the way.